Mm. Uh, I just knew of him. Yes, yeah. Thomas Legay Brereton. And there was a dentist from uh, Mac Winchester. Oh, Mac, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mac was a good bloke. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he's a good fellow. Yes, he belonged to the dental unit and uh, what if you have a black corporal bloke? There was a. Uh, or Ted Hooker was another dental bloke, mm. staff sergeant. Yeah. Mm. Ted was a nephew of L.J. Hooker, the real estate bloke. Yes, yeah. Mm. Mm. And you click it off again. The two after, and she was there, and I, I just said to her, Would you. Uh, I wasn't married at this time. Mm. Jane was living in Sydney, mm. and, but uh, we hadn't married. But I said, uh, uh, If you like, I'll wait and take you home, and you knock off. She mm. said, well, you can't take me home, Dad, I'm not have anything to do with the soldiers. Mm. And seven Divvy blokes have been playing up a bit before they went away. And mm. Anyhow, I said, well, I'll take you to wherever you want to go and then you can go home. Mm. Mm. So I, I made that a habit when I was in there to mm. pick her up and take her. Mm. We became quite close, actually. Mm. But uh, if I hadn't had Jane, I, I was madly in love with her, I'm sure I would have... Uh, I would have uh, picked up with this girl. Yes, yeah. But I know she was feeling had feelings for me, and uh, mm. I just left town without her knowing. Mm. And, uh, and I was in Dubbo. I went to Gilgandra to live after the war. I went up for six weeks holiday and stayed for twenty years. Mm. Mm. In nineteen forty six, I was walking down the street in Dubbo, and I met a friend I knew. I told Teresa the story. Mm. I, I met a friend I knew there. Uh, who had been associated with my brother-in-law. And I, I just said to her, do you, offhand, I said, yeah, but know this girl, I mentioned her name, and, and uh, she said, yeah, she's getting married today. Mm. I said, oh, God, isn't that strange? I'm walking down the street and bugging me dead if she's not walking up the street with the girls around like bridesmaids mm. and that. Yes. Yeah. He was getting ready to go for the wedding. Yes. So I just turned my head and walked down the other side of the street. Mm. And that's the only time that it's strange how it happened. I was yes. in there that day, the day she was getting married. Yeah. But she was a beautiful kid. Mm. Yeah, she was nice. Mm. Now, Michael, you think we've just about covered everything? Or what else have you got to ask? I, well, I, I'm, I'm exhausted. I've got you to the end of the war. <laughs> All right. I got into Sydney at mm. about 11 o'clock or, or, I don't know, between 11 and 2 anyhow, on a beautiful sunny day on, on the 15th of October 1945 and a bloke came up to me on the carrier and he said, there's someone with a sign over there with your name on it. I said, where are they? He said, on the top of a cattle truck. I said, that'd be right. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyhow, my brother and my wife. Uh -huh. And uh, anyhow, we had to get off the ship, onto buses, go driven through Sydney and go out to Ingleburn. Mm. All of our gear went out there and was dumped on the parade ground, you see. So I just got on the bus and got seated and I looked out the window and I saw my brother. And I jumped off and my wife was there with my mother and, and, and my brother, as I said. And she was driving this great big flash motor car and I thought, gee, what's happened here? But it belonged to a Jewish... Uh, millionaire, a jeweller that she was chauffeur for, mm. and that was his car. Yes. It was a Sudi Baker commander, mm. the last one to come to Australia in 1941. Mm. So she was li living there at the big mansion there at Glebe Point, Point, and he wouldn't have me go anywhere else, so I wanted to go back to up to Teralba near Newcastle. I stayed there for a couple of days and went up there and started meeting the people that were left behind, and mm. my family, and, and uh, as I say, 31st of August 1946, I was out, and I went back in again and, uh, for six months in 1947. Mm -hmm. I couldn't settle down and went to the Army School of Military Engineering. Things didn't work out there, so I, I cleared the Army in December of 1947. Yes. So mm. that was the story. Well, thank you very much. Mm. That's your you might dig something out of that you can use. Yep.